a very important mechanism of the uh, of alcohols it's this elimination reaction it's not straightforward to remember the uh, the reagent because it doesn't give so many hints of the reactivity or anything but it's a concentrated acid okay in some exam question you would see they give you the concentrated sulfuric acid in this case we have phosphoric acid anyway it's the same reactant for a reaction that is being covered already that is the addition the addition of alcohol and um, of an alkene okay so the opposite would be elimination the reverse would be addition to work out how that is done it's really important to uh, also because we can have different products depending on the position of the alcohol it's really really useful to look at the mechanism so we have a uh, concentrated alcohol which means that whatever it can give in the reaction is an H plus alcohol, uh, an acid, it's a proton donor. So we have the H plus in uh, the reaction. The only thing that can react with it is the lone pair on the, on the oxygen, right? It would form a bond with that. Okay. Notice the group that it's formed. So if uh, the OH picks up that H plus, it forms OH2 plus. And this may sound familiar, is water. But it's positive because oxygen would have three bonds. So if oxygen has three bonds, it has a positive charge. So this is a good living group yeah, because it's water. So it's really stable on its own. That's what it is, a good living group. So automatically, this bond would break simply because this is more stable than this. But then, of course, we are left with a carbocation. Okay, because uh, if the carbon loses one of these three bonds, it's left with one less. So it gets this positive charge. And something else happened. The positive charge needs to be neutralized. So um, these, the electron from carbon and hydrogen, they move in between the two carbons to form a lone pair, uh, double, sorry, double bond. And this reforms the catalyst, because look, here we started with an H+, plus, and if this is broken to form the double bond, we're left also with an H+. Plus. Okay, so this is acid is actually just the catalyst, yeah, because it's uh, used up in the first step, but then it's reformed in the last one. The point being that I really want, to, want you to think about is that uh, the hydrogen of the adjacent carbon of the alcohol has been removed to form the double bond. And that's the thing to notice. And that's why if we have an asymmetric alcohol, let's take an example like um, this alcohol. The thing to keep in mind, that's why it's important to not just being able to redo the mechanism, but to, to understand how it's possible, where this electron from the double bond form, is to know that uh, it's important to think about the, uh, the, neighboring car, the neighboring hydrogen, because that is removed to form the double bond. Okay, so This means that asymmetric alcohols like this one can form a different products. Let me make this a bit bigger. The double bond could be formed on the right hand side, but also on the left hand side, which means that we could have this alkene as well as this alkene. And it's one bond like this. Okay. Normally, the most substituted one is the most stable. And then one thing to notice is that if it's an asymmetric alcohol, Probably also the alkene won't have the same groups around. Maybe yes, maybe not. But the thing is that we could also have a stereoisomer of some of the products. Because as we know, uh, alkenes, they can have geometrical isomers if they have different groups around the double bond. So this one, notice that it has one CH3 here and one CH2H5. It could also be this isomer, which would be the either we can call it cis or we can call the Z isomer. And this would be the E isomer. So several products can result from the elimination of alcohols. And uh, some examples don't require the mechanism, but understanding it is important because like this, we can work out that the hydrogen has to be removed of the adjacent carbon and can be on either side of the OH. 
which means that we could also have the double bond in different position. And then to keep in mind is if we have an asymmetric alkene, we may have stereoisomers or geometrical isomers due to their restricted rotation around the double bond. If it's a primary, if it's like, if the double bond is on the first carbon, this won't happen because we know that if there are two hydrogens here, their position doesn't matter, is not relevant, so cannot have geometric isomers. So to notice is where the double bond can be formed and if it's an asymmetric alkene, if there are geometrical isomers.